Welcome to the Autism Wellbeing Plan, the podcast where you learn how to use advanced functional lab testing, healthy diet, and smart supplementation to improve your child's health, well-being, and quality of life, and by extension, your own quality of life. Please remember that this podcast is for educational purposes only, and always consult your healthcare practitioner before implementing anything discussed here. Now, here's your host and author of the book, Autism Wellbeing Plan, How to Get Your Child Healthy, Christian Yordanoff. In this episode, I'm going to go over the five daily essential supplements that basically need to be a part of every, pretty much every autistic child's supplement program. The supplements we'll discuss will be digestive enzymes, a multivitamin mineral blend, probiotics, essential fatty acids, and calcium and magnesium. So I'll give you a few details about the rationale of each one and uh, just a few tips uh, uh, and considerations around supplementing with them, right? So so we've already covered in previous episodes uh, why these supplements are so important or just supplementation in general, why it's so important, especially for autistic children. Uh, I also covered some, uh, you know, tips and tricks around supplements, you know, how to, how to start supplementing, you know, one, one at a time, a little bit at a time. So if you have not listened to those episodes, check them out. Um, it's really useful info, um, just to have, to keep in mind as you get new supplements and you kind of expand your child's, uh, supplement protocols and, and program. Okay. So the first supplement we'll discuss is digestive enzymes. So basically these are uh, various enzymes that help to break down food more fully inside the gut, right? So the rationale here is that we know that um, leaky gut inflammation, gut pathogens, and various other gut dis- uh, gut types of gut dysfunction are very common in autistic children. So anytime the intestinal lining is compromised, the intestinal cells' ability to secrete digestive enzymes can be reduced, right? So this this is the rationale here. So we, we're basically adding digestive enzymes to reduce the burden on the intestinal lining on those cells to help them more fully break down the food. And it's, it's basically a way to ensure or to reduce the chances of partially undigested food molecules entering uh, through the intestinal barrier entering into the the blood and you know there they can be perceived by the immune system as uh, antigens or for foreign invaders and this can lead to a lot of various immune reactions inflammation food sensitivities and so on right so this is definitely something you want to avoid when you're trying to get your child as healthy as possible there's a few studies in my book that i cite where the the researchers showed that autistic children, a substantial portion of the kids in those studies had deficiencies in various carbohydrate carbohydrate digesting enzymes. In one of the studies, all of the children who had enzyme deficiencies had loose stools or a gaseousness or gassiness, right? Or gas, whatever. So what we can deduce from this is if you cannot fully break down your food with digestive enzymes, it may be the bacteria or the yeast in the in the gut that will do that for you, right? But that has a lot of implications in terms of the compounds they create. So that, you know, that gas uh, or the, the smelliness of stools, uh, that could be because of, you know, putrefaction by bacteria and so on. So definitely something you want to avoid. So a few, there's been a little bit of research showing some uh, promising results. So there was one 12 week trial that noted improvements in the autistic children in terms of hyperactivity, socialization, along with better mood, attention, digestion, and sleep. Another study found significant improvements in behavior, emotional response, and gastrointestinal symptoms after three months of digestive enzyme supplementation. And the main behavioral changes the researchers reported were improvements in restricted repetitive behaviors and stereotypic behaviors. Now, the, there's only a couple of studies I'm, I'm uh, mentioning here, 
and they're looking at autistic symptoms. You know, how, how does digestive enzymes, how do digestive enzymes uh, affect those? And while there sometimes there is an improvement in autistic symptoms, this is not why you supplement your child with digestive enzymes. We're looking at it from a purely health perspective, helping the gut to heal, helping with food digestion and absorption and assimilation, helping to prevent or reduce the likelihood of immune activation and food sensitivities, things like that, right? Now, the main enzymes you want to look for when you are uh, shopping for digestive enzymes are proteases that break down protein, amylase, amylase or glucoamylase that break down starches, carbs, lipase that breaks down fat. And then you can also get other ones like papain and bromelain. These are plant derived enzymes from papaya and pineapple. Lactase breaks down uh, uh, lactose, the milk sugar. Uh, then there's other ones you can also get inside certain, uh, most um, supplement, uh, you know, digestive enzyme supplements will have several. So you may also see things like uh, invertase, cellulase, xylanase, phytase. So these would break down things like uh, table sugar, sucrose, uh, plant cell walls, uh, plant fibers, and phytase breaks down phytate, which is a compound that can bind with minerals and hinder their absorption in the gut. It's often found in things like wheat and grains and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's especially useful if your child does actually eat grains and stuff like that. But the most important thing about uh, digestive enzymes is you want a good blend of proteases, peptidases for the proteins, amylases, uh, uh, or a good amount of them for the carbs and lipase for the fats. And then whatever other ones there, you can just kind of, you know, um, consider a, a good addition to the product. But those are the, those three that I mentioned are the main ones, right? You can also get chewable digestive enzymes. They generally have more sweeteners and ingredients, but for some kids, it it's the easiest way to, you know, get them to take digestive enzymes. I personally would say it's better to get a good capsule blend. There, there's some really good ones that are, you know, really good value for money. You just open up the cap capsule and sprinkle it on, you know, at the start of the meal, the first few bites of food. That way, you know, using capsules like that and opening them up reduces the chance your child will react to something in, in the chewable uh, enzyme uh, supplement. Okay, so next up is a, a good high quality multivitamin and mineral supplement. So when I say high quality, I want to emphasize high quality. Trust me, you do not want the garbage they sell in your local supermarket. And there's like, I, I've, I've been filming some clips for the um, uh, course I'm doing, the free course around how to select high quality uh, supplements for your child. And I, I just, two days ago, I filmed the part on multivitamins. And I'll be honest with you, I, this was an iHerb I was looking at, and there's just so much garbage out there. You really want to just spend a couple of hours to learn the ins and outs, the most important points around selecting quality supplements, not only because you, you otherwise you would waste a, a bunch of money, but some of them can even be harmful. You know, some of these with, um, I saw one from Bayer, uh, that had at least three artificial colors. It had our artificial sweeteners or flavors it had copper it had a ton of iron um, it had very little zinc and just the, the calcium and magnesium were just you know bad uh, cheap low quality bio and available forms so the most important tips around uh, multivitamin and mineral supplements you want a high quality reputable brand you want obviously you want all the vitamins in there to be represented as much as possible a, C, D, E, K, and then the B vitamins. Uh, so the, there's a spectrum of B vitamins you want in there. B1, obviously, B2, B3, B5, and especially you want B6, B9, which is also known as folate. Sometimes they call it folic acid, and B12, right? 
So you want a good spectrum of these B vitamins. They're very important for mitochondrial function, energy production, and so on. Now, very important, you need to remember the folate needs to be either folinic acid or methylfolate. Sometimes it's also written as 5-MTHF, methotetrahydrofolate. You do not want something with folic acid, which is the synthetic form of folate. You want methylfolate or folinic acid. These are more activated forms. So the methylfolate is also known as a methylated folate. There's basically uh, the, the folic acid, the synthetic one uh, in the cheap crappy supplements, it, it takes several conversion steps in the body to get it to this methylfolate, right? The active form. And many of us are missing, as I've mentioned before, are missing genes or no, not, sorry, not missing genes, but we have uh, 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 polymorphisms in our genes that can reduce our ability to effectively methylate folate, right? So you might be giving someone folic acid, but they cannot utilize it very well, very efficiently. Like I, for example, have that MTHFR uh, gene polymorphism that uh, the homozygous one. So it's my uh, ability to methylate folate is actually very, very low. So for example, I would definitely need to take methylfolate and obviously then my kids would, um, would inherit at least at least the one copy of the gene, so they would definitely need meth uh, a methylated folate, right? So here, that's a, that's a little example. Many autistic kids would fall into this, into this ca category. Same story with the B12. You would um, need to get it in meth methylcobalamin is what it's called. Cyanocobalamin is the synthetic version. You definitely want to stay away from that. It's cheap garbage that they put in these supplements. So you want the methylcobalamin methylated or active form of it. Then you want obviously the essential minerals to be represented in the multivitamin. This includes obviously calcium, magnesium, zinc, selenium, manganese, and chromium. These would be the main ones. And occasionally some good formulations will have trace elements like molybdenum and boron. Now, what you want is also no copper. You, you want to stay away from supplements that have copper in them, unless it's like a super negligible amount. Uh, like we're talking about like 0 0.05 milligrams, you know, some there, I know there's one good multivitamin for kids that has that little copper and it's really very little copper. So that's fine. But what you also want is these minerals, calcium, magnesium, zinc, selenium, manganese, chromium, you want adequate amounts of these nutrients and high quality forms. So when I say adequate amount, sometimes you might see 20 uh, milligrams of calcium or five micrograms of selenium. And that's just almost negligible amounts of these supplements and um, these nutrients. I In the course and in my book, I, I discussed this at in more depth uh, and in the course that I'm currently, you know, recording, hopefully we'll get it out. You'll be able to uh, get access for free. Um, in there, I will discuss actual brands of supplements and we will look at the amount and the forms of the various uh, minerals and especially minerals, but also certain vitamins. And you will see what I'm talking about basically. So something like, you know, 10, 20 milligrams of magnesium is very little in a supplement. Uh, something like uh, th three milligrams of zinc is very little in a supplement, for example. Uh, something like maybe 10 milligrams of zinc. Now now would we, we would be talking for a, about a better amount when it's, let's say, uh, 100 milligrams of magnesium, that would be a better amount. So I'll be discussing a, uh, this in more depth um, in, in the course I'm talking about. But um, the other important thing to remember is you want the high quality forms of these nutrients. So I've already talked about, you know, methylated B12 and folate, but when it comes to the minerals you want, there are certain forms of minerals that are just low quality bio unavailable. And there are certain forms that are more bioavailable and higher quality. So 
the concept is known as chelation, when they chelate the minerals to amino acids. So it's like a, a type of reaction or cooking process almost. Well, and because uh, uh, most minerals are are kind of absorbed in the gut, bound to amino acids, uh, the the transporters that you know bring them across the, the the gut. That's how they work. So this is kind of the closest to what it would be like when we eat the food, you know, and and in in the stomach, the hydrochloric acid helps to chelate or bind the minerals to amino acids that we break down from the proteins that we eat, right? So the best forms are chelated minerals, but there are certain other forms. And again, if, you, if you're if you interested in getting more details about this, obviously it will be on the internet, but I have it all in one place for you in my book. Um, so definitely get that. There's two chapters on supplementation, quite a lot of supplements covered, something like 25 or, or so. But um, yeah, so chelated minerals and then when I get to the calcium magnesium section, we'll also discuss other forms, not, not necessarily chelated, that are also good forms of certain minerals. Okay, so next up is probiotics. So probiotics, if, if you don't know, are basically live microorganisms such as bacteria or yeast that can pro provide health benefits to us when taken in sufficient qualities. Now, uh, there's a little bit of uh, research in probiotics in autism, it's definitely ramping up. There's definitely been a lot of uh, uh, good anecdotal evidence. Many clinicians and parents have had great success with them. The research is slowly catching up with it. Um, but what probiotics can do is they can help alleviate gastrointestinal symptoms. And basically, they, they can improve uh, things like constipation, diarrhea, for example, they can reduce the overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria, they can uh, reduce inflammation, positively modulate the immune system, they can produce various antioxidants, vitamins, other beneficial substances, they can help to stabilize the intestinal barrier and just overall improve digestive health. So there's, there's a lot of research outside of autism that has shown us that probiotics can have a lot of tremendous benefits for us. So this is why this is such an important supplement to use. It's good to rotate the probiotic every two, three months, but um, uh, because so many autistic children have um, gut dysfunction and pathogenic organisms in there, it's just a really, really important addition to the protocol. And it's important to use high quality stuff, you know, not not some generic cheap brands from the supermarkets and things like that. You want the good quality stuff for, for when it comes to probiotics. You just, otherwise you, you could be wasting your money on something that does nothing, right? Now, in my book, I discuss about two, four, six, eight, nine probiotic strains or species that have uh, some, at least some research in autism, right? In, so they've shown some positive benefit in autistic children um, in, in, in one or more studies. So these were, would be so se several lactobacillus, so lactobacillus acidophilus, rhamnosus, plantarum, KCI, delbruchii, and bifidobacterium bifidum, bifidobacterium longum, also known as infantis, bifidobacterium brevae. Now these are and also Saccharomyces boulardii is another good one that I haven't seen research in autism, but I've seen other research where it's good for various uh, pathogenic bacteria and yeasts, right? So, so these are good ones to, to, to make sure that the probiotic has them when you are out shopping for it. Now, generally from, from the, I, I also recorded some videos around selecting probiotics for the course I was talking about. And from what I've seen is most kids probiotics would have some variation of these. So in terms of the species you get, uh, what I would say is when you're looking for a probiotic, uh, you would want to try and get more than five strains or species in there. And you would want at the minimum 5 billion CFUs or colony forming units, basically how many organisms roughly is in there. So you want to go at least for 5 billion, but likely more. And then at least five, but I would say if you can get something like there's a good one from Dr. Marcola, uh, 10 billion 
uh, uh, colony forming units, CFUs, and I think it was 10 or 11 uh, species and that include most of these that I um, that I just mentioned. So that's the kind of probiotic you want to uh, look for. Next up is omega-3 fatty acids. So you know the importance of omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA and EPA. So these generally the best sources are from fish oil or cod liver oil. We know these are uh, important to support brain development. They can uh, help with gut healing and they can help fight inflammation, right? Now, in my research for my book, I did uh, I did find several, I think it was about four studies that showed that autistic individuals had lower um, essential fatty acids uh, levels than, you know, the controls in those studies, right? So this is definitely an area where we know many autistic children would ha would have uh, inadequate levels of these. So it's definitely, uh, especially for, for growing kids, that their brains are growing at a rapid rate and all this, it's super important to, 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 to give them these supports on a daily basis, right? Now, I've also seen uh, in chapter 10 of my book, I talk about several clinical trials with omega-3 fatty acids that have reported benefits for children with autism. So some of these benefits included uh, significant increases in language and learning skills after 90 days, improvements in autistic behavior on the CARS, uh, also known as Childhood Autism Rating Scale, and of course, physiologically improvements in essential fatty acids levels in the blood. And one study also found improvements in communication and social withdrawal. So definitely um, uh, some good, non, obviously we don't have tons of research on, in this area, but some good um, evidence that the, there, there's benefits to it. And, you know, even if we didn't have any research backing it up, this is, these are just essential nutrients. Omega-3 fatty acids are super low in our diets. We just don't eat enough fish and kind of things that uh, provide them, unfortunately. So this is for, especially for kids, they have the, the great demand for, for nutrients. So this is just, it's just common sense. And as I keep saying, when it comes to kids with health challenges that we may or may not know about, it's just all the more important why a good cod liver oil or fish oil should be part of their daily uh, supplementation program. Now, uh, the nice thing about cod liver oil is that it also has natural uh, vitamin A and vitamin D in it. So we, we also know that intake and status of these nutrients, vitamin A and vitamin D, is also commonly low in autistic kids. So, you know, uh, cod liver oil is kind of extra bang for your buck. You're not just getting EPA and DHA and some other omega-3s. You're also getting vitamin A and D. So this is... It, Cod liver oil is just a superfood. It, it's actually closer to a food than a supplement, right? So I, you, you could consider it more of a, a food than a supplement. And just a, 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 a thing to uh, mention about uh, quality again, when it comes to cod liver oil, there's a lab, um, there's a, a manufacturer called Nordic Naturals. They're probably the best in terms of quality. I would see, see what they have. And then there's another one, Carlson Labs. They, they seem to be up there as well in terms of quality. So these two, Nordic Naturals and Carlson Labs would probably be my personal choice. Um, they're available on, you know, in many places, including like things like iHerb. So they use just really good manufacturing processes. So their stuff is really high quality. You know, there's very low chance of there being contaminants and kind of nasty things like heavy metals, PCBs and stuff like that. So when it comes to fish oil, because omega-3s are what are known as polyunsaturated fatty acids, they oxidize very easily. They get damaged very easily due to, so due to many factors. So you want the highest standards in the manufacturing process. So there's the least likelihood of these uh, fats coming to you uh, in a rancid, oxidized, damaged state because uh, they just are not 
they're, they're not good for us in that state, right? So definitely go for the, the highest quality you can afford there. And um, yeah, just be on the be on the lookout with cheaper products. Uh, you, you may see vitamin A and vitamin D uh, as uh, uh, retinol palmitate and colicalciferol. Now this would mean that they're added synthetic vitamins. So this is very important on the more expensive, higher quality supplements. The vitamin A and D origin will be only from the cod liver oil. That's what you want to be looking for. If you see colicalciferol for the D3 or retinal palmitate for uh, the vitamin A, you know that this is definitely uh, added synthetics, right? So you want to stay away from those ones. You want to keep it as, as natural to the cod liver oil as, as possible. Now, that's not to say that you can't get the, the lemony or orange flavored stuff, uh, You but you... You want to get the the higher quality supplements that ha that just use kind of more natural um, flavorings. Just you know, because we want to mask the taste of the cod of the fish. Nobody likes that kind of fishy taste. I guess some of us even have kind of traumatic mem memories of our mums or our grannies stuffing, you know, this cod liver down our throat. And uh, yeah, we sure we sure don't want to traumatize kids like that. You know, so there's. Now there's, you know, orange lemon flavored uh, cod liver oil, so that's not a problem anymore. And then finally, uh, the fifth and final daily essential uh, core supplement is calcium and magnesium. Now, I've mentioned it before, uh, when you, m many times, you know, if, if you're doing the full kind of health building program, at least that I talk about in my book, and that many other practitioners talk about, you would at least for a while try the gluten-free, casein-free diet. And when you when you take uh, ca uh, casein or dairy out of the diet, you're taking out the milk products, obviously. And what that can do is that can greatly reduce the source of calcium that your child gets. Now, obviously, we know calcium is super important for bones and you know uh, growing children. They need a lot of it, but it can also protect against lead toxicity. Um, we know that uh, uh, le uh, calcium deficiency can increase lead absorption. This can have negative effects on cognitive and behavioral development. Super important to get enough calcium. Obviously, the best source of calcium is from food, but when that's not possible, the next best thing is supplements. So that's the, the rationale behind calcium and the, the rationale behind magnesium is the two need to be taken in a two to one ratio. So for every two milligrams of calcium, one milligram of magnesium roughly, right? And the, the, why is magnesium important? It's it's super essential, it's in every cell. It's, it's just important for uh, countless uh, biochemical processes in the body. And unfortunately, our diets are woefully deficient in magnesium. Uh, leafy green vegetables are the probably the best source of magnesium. We know, never mind kids, but even ourselves, how, how many greens, how much greens do we eat in a day or a week? Very little. And kids, obviously, they don't really enjoy uh, dark green leafy vegetables very much. So our diets, all of us are just really, really low on magnesium. This is why it's so important to supplement this vital nutrient. The nice thing about magnesium, it has a calming effect on the body. In fact, calcium, magnesium, and zinc, they are uh, sedative minerals. They have a calming effect on the nervous system. So especially in like kids that have difficulty falling asleep or very agitated with anxiety, with kind of hyperactivity, calcium, zinc, and magnesium just really work, can work wonders uh, for many of these kids, right? So little tip there. And another little thing is, so uh, vit a little bit of vitamin D, so some, some calcium magnesium supplements come with a little bit of vitamin D this is a good thing. It can help with calcium absorption. So keep that in mind. If you see a little bit of vitamin D in your calcium magnesium, they, that's probably a smart decision from the manufacturer. They know 
they know about this if they've thought about this a little bit so that that's good the only time you would not want vitamin d in your calcium and magnesium supplement is when you're doing like an a low oxalate protocol uh let's say you do the organic acids test your child has high candida or yeast and the oxalates are high in that case there's a certain form of uh, calcium and magnesium called citrate that you want to take with meals without vitamin d that can help to bind those oxalates in the food so they they don't get inside your child's body because you're trying to reduce the oxalate burden right so that's one time where you don't want vitamin d in in your calcium magnesium supplements okay so the f the high quality forms of calcium to look for so as i mentioned uh, earlier you want either chelated calcium where the mineral is attached to an amino acid of some type so it on an ingredient label it would be something like calcium amino acid chelate and then there's that calcium citrate that i mentioned and then all other good forms of calcium are calcium lactate and calcium ascorbate now bad low quality bio unavailable forms of calcium are things like calcium carbonate which is chalk as i've mentioned before stay away from supplements like this they actually cal calcium carbonate is used as a filler in many supplements so if that's your main um, source of supplement in a uh, uh, if that's your main source of calcium in a supplement uh, that's a massive red flag and then calcium phosphate dicalcium phosphate and tricalcium phosphate these are also used kind of like as a fillers excipients that kind of thing so if 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 a manufacturer is coming at you saying you know this, this supplement has a source of calcium and this is it well you know this is garbage that they're selling you so stay away from that and when it comes to magnesium very similar story so good forms of magnesium are chelated forms again these are bound to amino acids so look for something like uh, magnesium amino acid chelate on the label sometimes uh, it could be something like magnesium glycinate for example uh, glycine the amino acid or magnesium bisglycinate other good forms of magnesium uh, magnesium citrate again uh, magnesium malate magnesium gluconate these are good uh, quality forms and then the forms of magnesium to avoid so cheap supplements would often have magnesium oxide this is definitely if you see that on an ingredients list stay away from that magnesium oxide is just poorly absorbed that it can even cause um, uh, gi distress in some people magnesium chloride another one to stay away from um, so yeah but basically those are um, those are the ones you want to stay away from you want your magnesium to be either a citrate or some type of chelate generally now a uh, final little tip uh, magnesium citrate can actually help to loosen stools so if your child is a bit constipated you could try some magnesium citrate to help kind of you know help push those stools along so that's a little tip there always having a little bit of magnesium citrate maybe even in in a powder form that you can mix with some juice it's just handy to have in case you know anyone in the family is a little bit sluggish in terms of their digestion so there is so that's that's the five supplements um i wanted to discuss as i mentioned these are just essential basics the core of the supplementation the daily supplementation program um you know if 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 you're not on these yet definitely you know if you need more convincing why they're so important chapter 10 of my book covers this topic in in even more detail um obviously other other practitioners uh also talk about the importance of these supplements so you know you don't have to take my word for it there's many other practitioners out there whom you whose work you can consult and you can see for yourself you know these aren't, aren't just my opinions all of my recommendations are the result of a ton you know hundreds and hundreds and possibly th i think at this point thousands of hours actually th what am i saying hundreds thousands of hours of research so um 
yeah, I hope that you found this episode informative and useful, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you for uh, watching or listening. Thank you for listening. Please help us to spread this vital information by rating the podcast on iTunes and sharing it with others who may find the information useful. For further content and resources, go to christianjordanoff.com. Don't forget to pick up your copy of the book Autism Wellbeing Plan today, available on Amazon.